Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Ishika Bedia, and I welcome you all to the paper presentations for Track 3 and Track 4. I request all the SYs to rename themselves with the word SY underscore their roll number. And I would also like to request all the participants to name themselves with the word participant followed by their paper code in the format participant underscore T101. Attendees are requested to wait till the end of all track presentations for any questions. To give you all a perspective on how the Q&A will take place, the students who have any questions have to go on the chat box on your Zoom screen, select the name of the track in charge, that is Dr. Samira Reis, and send the question, as the question is only be supposed to send to her. The message must consist of a question and to whom the question is being asked to. At the end of the segment, the track in charge will facilitate the Q&A and ask questions to the respective students. Track 3 dwells into sustainable development and new dimensions in HRM and OB. Please join me in welcoming our distinguished judges for this track, Dr. Nishan Kandelwal and Dr. Neha John Panikil, who are associated with the Marcy Center for Management Studies, Pune, as assistant faculty. Fo following are the guidelines to be kept in mind before we start the presentation. Every student will have 10 minutes for their slot. The slot is divided into two parts, six minutes for your presentation, and four minutes for a feedback or Q&A by the judges. The track in charge shall intimate you after the fifth minute of your presentation. Please keep a track of time while presenting. The instructions are present on your screen as well. I now invite our first participant from track C, C301, Anshul Kumari, from Krishna Jayanti College, Bengaluru, Karnataka presenting on the topic, Analyzing and Evaluating Firm's Contribution to CSR. Good morning, ma'am. Am I with, uh, audible? Yes, you're audible participant. Yeah. Uh, shall I present the presentation? Yeah, you may present your screen and uh, start with the presentation. Okay. Uh, is it visible? Yes, participant. Okay, so first of all, good morning, one and all present here. First of all, I'll thank you for thank everyone and the team for giving me this opportunity and platform to showcase my skill and opportunity. Uh, here, my topic goes like this: that is analyzing and evaluating firms' contribution to corporate social responsibility. That is basically evaluating uh, how the firms are contributing to the society, and uh, apart from just being pro profit motive in the business world. So, here's an introduction part. So. Uh, Getting right into the pre presentation, the track which I've chosen is the first one. Uh, it talks about sustainable development and the measures practiced by the firms for the welfare of uh, like environment, human and ethics, and especially focusing, mainly focusing on the below poverty line people of the society. And the major steps uh, are like taken by the firm which impacts the society and for its betterment and uh, ethically uh, initiates and helps the firm to maintain their reputation as well and enhancing their global reputation especially. So apart from government welfare schemes, uh, even there are policies for the businesses as well that they have to maintain such kind of uh, ethical environment and for the welfare of the society. So this includes the CSR that is corporate social responsibility, uh, especially uh, which they carry out uh, for their benefit. Uh, I mean the society the benefit, which play uh, which is playing a major role for the upliftment of uh, the standard of living and people and enhancing the quality of life for them, and it eventually creates an impression in the minds of audience as well and helps the business to grow uh, and develop like automatically. The second slide this talks about the literature review which I have done. So in the case of CSR that I've explored in this paper, it includes the role that the firms play for the betterment. So here I've chosen two uh, firms mainly, that is Tata Motors and Microsoft. Uh, in their case studies of CSR activities, I've examined that these firms have immensely contributed for the social welfare. These two have uh, like uh, stood as a great example 
in the business world how business incorporate morally into their operations apart from just uh, providing services and being profit motive and what they have basically done is they have incorporated such responsibilities into their uh, core values and like a vision which uh, is kind of getting easier for them to carry out it on carry out such activities and events on a regular uh, it has become a like core part of their uh, daily life so here's the objective uh, the ma main objective which I have focused on is to study and analyze the sustainable impact on the environment through consistent CSR activities. So the activities which is going on on a regular basis, uh, how they are impacting the environment and is there any ga gap which is getting bridged by such activities and events that has been carried out. So mainly I focused on two uh, companies that is Microsoft and Tata Motors. So I'll, I'll be talking about that only. And to find out the firm's contribution in terms of activities and budget allocation as well for the for such firms that is mentioned in this case study further. To analyze the effectiveness of CSR initiatives and their influence in the society, like how it has impacted over the years, the change it brought to the society and how it has reached the gap and so on. So this is my main objective, which I'm talking about now. So here goes the methodology. Uh, like this is a thorough understanding of the approaches initiated by Tata Motors and Microsoft, mainly focusing on problem solving techniques and to foster the growth of sustainable development, aiming the goal to extract significant data of how these uh, firms are affecting the social welfare and bringing out the best of their ethical practices. For both the companies, like uh, what I have done is conducted a semi-structured interview uh, mainly with the people which I have known earlier or who are working or have worked in these organizations uh, in my group and fellow relatives who have uh, like worked there. The measure uh, taken for uh, the well-being of the society by these firms uh, and also to just cross-check what have come. Please note that you only have a minute left. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, and uh, here goes like uh, from the official website of Tata Motors and uh, Microsoft, I have gathered uh, CSR reports that the annual report that is officially being conducted every year. So according to that, I have uh, done. And here are the findings. So this study comes up with findings which cl clearly depicts the involvement of uh, firms and CSR activities that is Microsoft mainly projected on the climate change issues, pollution control and environmental waste control measures, making sure that the service is still convenient and sustainable to the customers who are uh, using the services. Uh, so what I have come out with, uh, what they have come out with uh, their events and uh, such measures is that in the year 2022, Microsoft contracted 1.4 million metric tons uh, to of carbon, re carbon removal and incorporated up of about 1 million people with clean water and sanitation solutions by the end of year. So, and some, uh, it's the Tata Motors in its uh, eighth annual CSR report, Tata Motors have highlighted its comprehensive efforts to address societal and environmental challenges faced by the public, uh, especially, especially the ones uh, suffering like below poverty line and uh, they have also with the with their uh, events name as Kaushala and Vasundra. Sorry to interrupt, but your six minutes are up. Please wind it up fast so the judges, the panelists can ask you questions. Okay, coming on to the conclusion. Uh, like as per this research paper, I have come to this conclusion that this firm have these firm have operated very strategically. Uh, maintaining their reputation and budget allocation as well, like the way they have uh, impacted the society in a positive way. They stood as an evoking examples in today's uh, world and the journey uh, is very inspirable for the other businesses as well in the corporate world. With the incorporation of uh, such values and such responsibilities, they have proved that firms can not only thrive for profit making, but also engage to be a part of sustainable world and change the lives of certain group of people, environment and work for the sustainability of future. 
uh by this way the they have paved the way and set example for corporate leaders and contribute for such issues and create an impact so this is what i have come with uh, so yeah okay uh hello participant yes sir yeah uh, are you comfortable can i ask you some question yes sure sir Okay, first of all, I really appreciate your effort and you have very rightly chosen two reputed companies, including Tata Motors, uh, as they have been excelling in their CSR contributions. Very good. Uh, I have you, uh, one important question here for you. Uh, uh, is it mandatory under Companies Act in India uh, to make certain contributions? Are you aware of something like this under CSR? Uh, uh, so as far as I know that uh, it has been like uh, it's been since over the years that companies are only uh, going for pro profit and so on and they are kind of neglecting the environment and the nature. So because of this, the government has made a compulsory rule that they have to do something for the environment, uh, contribute to the environment for their uh, welfare, uh, whether it be like uh, don donating or uh, like taking care of health, education, or in any okay. sector or field, okay. they have to. Yeah, but do you know the amount, percentage of uh, their revenue or profit? Anything are you aware of? Uh, I've read about it, but right now I'm not able okay. to recall it. No problem. I really appreciate your efforts. And uh, it, it speaks a lot about you that you have tried to, you know, uh, learn researching and then uh, also right and now presenting the paper here. Uh, thank you very much and I wish you all the best. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, participant. You may stop sharing your screen. Yeah. I now invite our second participant from Track 3, P302, Mr. Jain, Manya Dhingra and Hitika Dal from Jagan Institute of Management Studies, Delhi. Presenting on the topic, the ideal balance of human and artificial intelligence in HR. Thank you. Just being visible? Yes, participant. Okay, thank you. Is my video visible? Uh, one of your videos is visible. I don't think uh, the ones who are speaking right now, I don't think your video is visible as of now. Just a second, give me a second. Your video is visible now. You may start with the presentation. A very good morning, everyone. So let us start with the presentation. The first comes the introduction. <clears throat> the title of our research paper, <clears throat> The Ideal Balance of Human and Artificial Intelligence in HRM, highlights the fact that how the right balance between human and AI contributions in HRM plays an important role in the business organizations. Thus, it is a very crucial aspect for organizational success. Our research paper fills a critical research gap by addressing the need of a balanced relationship between human and AI in the human resource management. In the near future, businesses will rely even more on AI to boost efficiency and productivity. Our research paper sheds light on the fact that AI has significant disadvantages which cannot be overlooked. Now, I would like to speak about the literature review. We incorporated diverse author perspectives to enhance our exploration of AI in HRM for our research paper. Like according to Gantz, AI, has, AI can replicate certain writing styles or patterns, but it may not have the same level of nuisance and variation as a human author. Also, Shoham said that uh, authors don't need to be concerned about being replaced with the software, but they should become familiar with AI writing technology. Now I would like my teammate to continue further with the objectives. 
So now we will discuss what the research paper actually wants to achieve through its objectives. The first objective is to study the significance of human in engagement in HRM. So we often see that uh, technological advancements have, have been playing a crucial role in our daily lives. But we also need to make sure that if we are using AI in organizations and giving it that much power, it should also align with the human values and should not disrespect any individual efforts. The second objective is to study the two-way impact of AI in HRM. On one hand, we see that uh, AI is accelerating our task and making our life much more better and it's making our lifestyle very much easier as well. But we also see that on the other hand, um, that AI is also uh, making replacing human jobs as well. And sometimes during interviews, if we see that AI is helping in the recruitment process, we see that the confidence level of the candidates often reduces. This is a huge disadvantage, uh, disadvantage that we need to take care of. Next, we move on with the methodology of our uh, research paper. Next slide, please. So our research paper uh, stands entirely on the secondary sources, which range from the research papers to um, the reports. And we have also used social media platforms, for example, LinkedIn, on which we have seen many employers and other candidates presenting their views on how they feel about AI engagement in our uh, HRM activity. Next, we see that uh, we, we have also analyzed certain trends that have been involving uh, around in the organizations to keep it up to date. Also, we have identified and dissected many other factors through which we see why AI has been adopted. Next, I would like my teammate to continue. So now we come towards the findings. The findings of the, our research are that artificial intelligence has a role in a HR, but it cannot replace human involvement. Most applicants prefer human interviews and perceive, perceive AI's presence in recruitment as having minimal impact on job outcomes. The second is trust issues. Among employees, increase post-AI implementation in HR. While AI aids performance management by tracking behavior and performance, it lacks of transparency, possesses challenges to decision acceptance. In employee retention, AI is valuable but introduces challenges like trust issues, ethical dilemmas, and data privacy concerns. A balanced approach integrating AI and human elements is crucial in HRM to negate these challenges. And in training, AI identifies strengths and weaknesses, but human facilitators must provide a personalized touch that AI cannot replicate. Dear participant, please note that you only have a minute left. Yeah, sure. Uh, the next is our conclusion. So mm -hmm. our research emphasizes the pivotal role of uh, artificial intelligence. Sorry. Yeah, uh, uh, it is manages retention, training. Oh, sorry, yeah, it manages train, uh, retention, training, employee uh, and development among other aspects of human involvement. But as uh, AI in HR comes with many benefits, but it also comes with many pitfalls. So when we are adopting AI, it is very crucial that we uh, manage AI very caref uh, very carefully in our HR, HRM practices. So AI is the future in HR, but we uh, need to mini uh, minimize its risk and maximize its profits. And those who will adopt it smartly and confidently will thrive in the future. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Mishti, Hitika, and Manya. Uh, we truly appreciate the team effort that you've put in and the way you've beautifully presented your two objectives of the study. The topic you've taken up is also very relevant today and is a matter of very serious research when we're talking about artificial intelligence, especially in the human resource department. So I congratulate you on selecting such a relevant topic. Uh, you know, I'll give you a very small feedback. 
and then maybe I'll ask you one question. So you've got uh, your study based on secondary research and you've read very recent re research papers to arrive at your conclusion. So maybe as a next step, since your base is ready, you can venture into a little bit of a primary research. So get in touch with a few companies and see what you've studied through your secondary research and what are companies talking about. So are they emphasizing on the challenges that you identified? So that would be able to take your research to the next level. Having said that, it's still a very good paper and we truly appreciate your efforts, okay? So thank I have, you. Thank you. And uh, so I have a very quick question for you. I saw that your literature review is very recent and you focused on um, all the articles that have come out in the year 2021, 22, 23. So when you all were reading, is there any one paper that stood out for you and you truly loved, enjoyed reading that paper? And what were your findings from that paper? Okay, so there was a research paper. I don't exactly remember the name. I'll uh, just search it and let you know. Um, um, it has uh, various prim uh, primary data and not only just primary data, it had secondary data to all the graphs and um, pie charts. Everything was uh, very clear and to the point. And uh, it had a very good language, like no plug and, uh, and the language was very clear and it was very understandable. Not like you have to put a lot of effort to understand the resource paper, but also help uh, help us writing the resource paper. Um, we uh, took many uh, secondary data from that particular research paper too. All also, right. Yes. Interrupt. Also, most of the research papers, we observed that uh, they were talking about how AI should replace humans and which we found really wrong. So we chose a topic to uh, debate on that uh, research paper we found many multiple most of the research papers were talking about the one thing that ai should re uh, replace human because the task would be more fast and efficient but we found it wrong in some aspects so that is why all right thank you so much wish you all the best thank you thank you participant i would now like to invite our next participant please p03 aman agrawal and risa jogia from krista jayanti college department of management bengaluru karnataka Presenting on the topic, Harmony Amidst Chaos, a comprehensive study on stress management and work-life balance in modern literature. Yeah, hello, you can hear me, right? Yes. Just give me a sec, I'll just share the screen. Yeah, uh, is my screen visible? Yes, participant. You may start Thanks. with the presentation. Right, okay. Uh, so a very good morning to one and all present here. Yeah, I would just- uh, Sorry to interrupt, uh, participant, yeah, yeah. but can you please turn on your video? Right, right. Yeah, you can see, right? Yeah, your video is there. Can you please also uh, start sharing your screen again? Right. Right, okay. So everyone can uh, view the screen, right? Yes. Right, okay. So a uh, very good morning to one and all present here. My name is Amana Gawa and uh, I have my co-presenter Hijabi Jogia and we are from Krishu Jayanti College. And I think it's mainly focused on stress management and work-life balance in modern literature. And the topic uh, or the title that we have chose is Harmony Admissed Cures, right? So uh, coming on to the introduction part of our basic research is the, Sorry to the stress part. management. Can you, just, uh, can you just present the presentation? Sorry? Can you just click on present because it will be visible that way. All right, okay. Mm. So Aman, there is a present button. You just click on that. So we'll be able to see your full screen presentation. Yeah, just next um, to but that. But it over here is not. All right. Yeah, yeah, but yes. like this, this uh, my team code is coming over there. Ma. All right, don't worry. Please continue. 
Yeah, right. So basically, our, uh, coming on to the introduction part, right, we basically focused on achieving a balance between our professional life as well as our personal life, right? So most of the employees, uh, the article which we went through on the topic, you know, stress management and work-life balance, a lot of the parts, lot, lot of the employees are not able to balance the stress, right? It might be due to some pressure or it might be due to some other perspective of their own uh thing it might be their work or it might be something else so our research mainly focuses on how do they balance the stress right so uh, coming on to the literature review for the literature review basically we went through uh, like different articles uh, from xi ximb journals or uh, and uh, university of southampton's articles we went through and we went through the, uh, the world health organization's articles too which was mainly focused on stress management and work life balance but the basic findings or the basic gaps that we found through a lot of articles was no one was really talking about the health issues, right? No one was really focusing on the health issues. No one was exactly mentioning the uh, employee's perspective. Like what is that one thing that is creating a lot of stress and a lot of uh, different perspective in their mind, right? So uh, our mainly focus on the World Health Organization's report, which was recently uh, issued by them in order to make us aware about the Thing uh, like the employees that they are going through. So the, if we can uh, clearly see over here, the thing which I have wrote over here is the stress that uh, the the disease that occurs between the age bracket of thirty five to fifty. And the second second most thing is that we have mainly focused on the age bracket of thirty five to fifty. The reason to choose this age bracket is to make like this is the most important uh, period for any human being. Till 30, there is a sense of experimenting with our life. We can choose different sectors. We can choose different departments. But from age 35 to 50, there is a sense of responsibility. And there's a sense of different sectors that we can't really change or we can't really go to some other departments. So that's the main focus over here in our literature review. Uh, so the diseases are like a bunch of diseases. It might be mental diseases. It might be physical. It might be anything. So uh, no, no, no other articles have really much talked about the diseases that occurs, right? And even the the employee's perspective is somewhere missing down and also i have listed on some of the topics like gender age and cultural backgrounds are also some of the factors that are really missing because of which a lot of stress and work-life balance is kind of becoming imbalanced right and uh, coming on to uh, my objectives right so the primary objective is to investigate what exactly impacts on our mental health and the second major objective is to you know how to maintain that right what is the how, how do we uh, maintain the personal life as well as our stress uh, like the per, uh, like the professional one right uh, so the gap identification that we found through was really to understand the factors leading to the issues right current uh, literature often lacks on comprehensive exploration of coping strategies and specifying circumstances that focus individuals. Uh, we also went through different uh, articles in order to come up to this particular topic for the reason for this to choosing the, uh, this one is right. The findings and the results will be continued by my co-presenter Richa and she will be continuing with the methodology for this particular section. Am I audible? Yeah. Okay. So methodology. The proposed study has implemented a comprehensive research approach that incorporates qualitative research technique. The, uh, the study has carefully utilized uh, secondary information sources such as research papers, books, and reputable websites to attain these objectives effectively. This methodology was imperative in thoroughly understanding the study's background and scope. Now, moving forward to findings. Can you change the slide? So, findings. The research paper contains a comprehensive exploration of the relationship between work-life balance, stress management, and overall well-being. Here are some key findings from the research paper. Work-life balance, stress, and mental health. This paper explores the complex interrelationship between these three factors. It examines how stress at work affects the mind and body with the focus of damaging effects of ongoing stress on mental health. Challenges faced by the individuals. The study highlights the difficulties the people face juggling their juggling their personal and professional life, which can cause stress and negatively affect the mental health. Factor affecting yeah, participant. Yeah, yeah, what? Five minutes left. As study know that you only have a minute left. Okay, okay, fine. Statistics and struggles with work-life balance. A report from CIPD Good Work Index in 2023 is mentioned 
showing that a majority of respondents feel that work makes it difficult for them to relax and that a large respondents find it difficult to meet personal commitments of work. Study scope. The purpose of the study is to shed light on these difficulties and how they affect particular people. Now, by concluding my presentation, I would like to say that the study emphasizes how crucial proactive stress management and work-life balance tactics are for people, companies, and societies at large. Mindfulness, boundaries, and well-being benefit individuals. Flexible policies and mental health programs force support at work. Support at work. Smart laws and education aid stress management. Creating an atmosphere that values empathy, adaptability, and all-encompassing support from its employees can promote sustainable productivity and fulfillment in the workplace. Thank you so much. Hello, participants. Hi, good yeah. morning, sir. Yeah, so good morning uh, to both of you. So to begin with, you have selected a very, uh, you know, contemporary topic, work-life balance and uh, stress management. Right, and sir. I also see that uh, you have gone through, you have collected, uh, collected a lot of information from right, the uh, references which you have cited. And you have taken some good amount of effort in, uh, you know, compiling and also trying to understand the research method. As I see, you have tried to uh, follow uh, some system or, you know, the steps of research, which is good. So I have one question right now. Uh, yes. uh, and before that, I want to also give you a feedback that uh, you may also like to, because this is a very vast uh, researched area. So there are, you know, thousands of uh, good uh, papers available, good reports available. So you may, uh, you know, go through uh, some more of them, particularly the one which are very reputed one. And uh, you can relook at what you have done and improvise on, uh, you know, uh, being less verbatim and little more specific in each of your sections of the research. Okay. Now, one question. Uh, I would like to understand, uh, any one of you can attempt this answer. Uh, what is your uh, one or two line key understanding of work-life balance? Okay. Uh, so, so basically, uh, two things I would like to say. So, like basically what uh, the question, if I want to reframe it, the one thing that I thought, like I think of the stress management or and the work no, no, work balance. Life balance. What is your understanding of work-life balance? Right, sir. So basically, sir, I think the communication has to be exact and accurate, sir. Uh, because, you know, there's a lot of uh, communication gap that happens between the employees and the, like in order to not uh, able to balance of the life. I think communication is something that is has to be accurate and exact. And secondly, there should be a target wise uh, particular sections of uh, so that, you know, you can balance the work life as well as your personal life. What happens is like the uh, the person just gives up the job, like he gives up the task and he keeps on giving it. Like once you finish it, like the particular day, there's just, there just has to be set of targets in order to, you know, so that once he finishes the target, he can also balance up with the, his personal life as well as the personal life because of which the stress can be managed and they, they will be a, you know, peace in his mind also and in the work life also. Okay. So I think the communication has to be exact and accurate. So, okay. Okay. Uh, Richard, are you saying something or are we done? Okay, okay. So thank you very much. We wish you all the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, thank you participants. I would now like to invite a fourth participant from Track 3, P304, Murtaza M. Ali, Mohammad Avies Qureshi, and Vedangi Kannao from GS College of Commerce, Varda, Maharashtra, presenting on the topic, Navigating the Future of Human Resources, the Synergy of AI and HR in a Changing World. I would like to inform the judges that all the participants are joining from the same device. I would also like to request all the participants to kindly turn their video on throughout the presentation.
participants can you please turn your video on you may go ahead with your presentation yes. so should we start now yes yes change is in inevitable but transformation is your choice a very warm good morning to one and all present over here. Today, we pristine researchers are here with our topic, Navigating the Future of Human Resources, the Synergy of AI and HR in Changing. So let's move towards the very first introduction, that is technical technological transformation in HR. So very first, what it says is there's a rapid change in today's era where AI is playing a very important role and making it transform into HR is our objective. Now, moving ahead with our second point is actually, are we integrating AI in actual functions of HR or actual functions of a company? The next course is element with the organization, alignment with the organization strategies. This plays a very key role in performing as alignment with organization with AI and HR is the most important thing we are looking for. Now. Moving ahead with our second point, are the strategies, focusing on certain strategies are playing one of the most important part in any role of a company. So are the professionals are taking the help or are engaging themselves with the help of AI to increase their efficiency? So moving towards the last, that is embarrassing AI as a valuable tool. As we're moving towards towards a modern era where technology is playing a very key role, I think embarrassing AI with HR would be the best option we can go for. Now, moving towards the literature review, after a whole study, we found that whatever gaps were there in our research, we just moved and concluded to the next slide of the objectives that comes to. So speaking about our first objective, it's all about the same and future prediction that the AI is likely going to replace the HR, but is it true? Now, moving ahead with our second objective, we are going to identify certain key areas where actually the HR professionals are going to arrange themselves or sustain themselves in today's end moment. So moving towards the third objective, which says that integration and potential of HR and fusion of AI. Moving ahead with our last objective, we are actually pro going to provide certain recommendations to our HR professionals so that they can implement or take help of certain AI tools to actually. I think there's some interruption with the network connection. Today's the international party. market. Go ahead with our research. Uh, Participants, there was some I interruption in your so. connection. Can you please repeat the last point? Oh, sure. Just. Last point of objective, right? Yes, the fourth point, and then you can continue quickly. Okay. So, moving ahead with our last objective. Actually, we are going to provide certain kind of recommendations to our HR professionals so that they can actually sustain themselves in today's era of international market, or we can say in today's era of competitive market. So moving towards the next slide of methodology, where our first point covers is the literature review, which we very first explored the key theories, frameworks, and the findings, which are related and important for the integration of AI and HR. Secondly, we... mixed method approach to capture both quantitative as well as qualitative data. And the third point which says the sampling strategy, there we utilize a stratified random and sampling methods to ensure the diverse perspective. Fourthly, we have collected data and methods with the means of secondary database. Actually, we are not having any kind of primary database on which we can focus, but yes, we have collected and employed the secondary database. The fifth course is ethical consideration that we have out outlined all ethical guidelines and data collection analysis according to the ethical consideration. Now, moving ahead with our sixth point, uh, actually, we have allocated the resources very 
efficiently and firstly we have identified the potential uh, challenges and then we have uh, just implemented our strategies or made our strategies accordingly the seventh goal is that is we fully researched our project and make sure that our expected outcomes are properly according to the research and may have a good outcome in future we will end with the conclusion and we are going to highlight certain insights and synergy of actually integrating ai and hr in navigating the future of human resources dear participants kindly note that you only have a minute left yeah so moving to more towards uh, moving towards the finding slides the very first goal is a transformation of impact on hr practices which are the best and irreplaceable of human element in strategic decision making secondly we know that recruitment is really an important task so we are going to replicate our ai's role in recruitment as well the third goal is the onboarding dynamics which says that training an official uh, an official hr professional would be vital for fostering it fourthly we are going to track the performance of a particular professional or particular uh, human resource accordingly also it ensures that personalized development with ai would be possible with this thing now moving ahead with our last concluding slide so speaking about our first conclusion which we have derived is the impact of ai and automation is really great but yes it is not going to replace hr but hr can uh, surely take benefits and increase their efficiency so as what i said that hr is that ai is not going to replace hr our second thing says the same that is strategic thinking in hr it will surely help hr to develop their thinking and be a more critical and more uh, perspective perspective looking towards the strategy and ai yes for strategic thinking will require the integration of ai into hr for the seamless experience and the third and fourth, that is balancing ai and human touch that this is the perfect balance of ai and hr maintaining it with a proper touch would be the best thing lastly moving with the conclusion ai is actually your, your time is up yeah ma'am just concluding the last point please okay. so lastly lastly we are going to actually emphasize on the work life balance and stress stress management of our certain hr professionals by integrating ai into it great uh, thank you murtaza avez and vedangi this was a great presentation are you there um Are you there? I think there is. Yeah, there's a network error. It's all about our participant. There's a network error from your side. Can you please check it? Ah, uh, Murtaza, Avez, and Vedangi, are you all there? All right. I think they've got some network issues. Uh, then we come back. We'll just wait for them to join back. Ah, uh, maybe one minute. Oh, is there someone who's checking with them? Yes, ma'am. The tech team is checking with them. Okay. They have come back. Yeah, I think they have. Okay, so Murtaza Aves and Vedangi, that was a very good presentation, and the topic you've selected is very apt and very relevant today. uh what we truly appreciated was the literature review where you've actually categorized the national and international studies that was a very good attempt and the four objectives that you spelled out so clearly and took us through the journey of your entire methodology these are things that we truly appreciated in your paper so well done just a very quick question since your conclusion was rushed is there any finding one finding that you want to talk about and that's the only question we have Yes, you can unmute yourself. Yes, please unmute yourself, and you can talk about one finding. 
Visible? Yes, participants. I request you to kindly turn your video on. Yes. You may go ahead with your presentation. Um. Good morning, everyone. My name is Asya, and my group members are Janvi, Kuesta, and Anushka. And the four of us, we uh, made a research paper on HRM's role in promoting an inclusive and healthy work environment. Uh, we are from BBA, MISPP, Doha, Qatar. And the four of us, uh, basically, our research paper is based on inclusive and healthy work environment. And we are aware of how impactful it is when it comes to employee productivity, employee retainment, and uh, employee welfare, not just financially, but also when it comes to uh, emotional well-being of the employees. So how our research paper came into being, our literature review, objectives, findings, all of that shall further be explained by Janvi and Kvesta, and our research paper shall be concluded by Anushka. So in our literature review, we examined a total of 12 research papers. These papers provided uh, valuable insights into these various uh, human resource management uh, practices and their impact on employee performance, uh, psychological well-being, uh, and overall uh, organizational performance. Additionally, the papers shed light on the significant role of uh, human resource management in cultivating an inclusive workplace and promoting a work-life balance. So moving on to our objectives, um, our uh, research paper aims to undertake a comprehensive analysis of the role of HRM uh, in building a healthy and inclusive work environment in the country of Qatar. Furthermore, we intend to provide well-informed recommendations based on uh, the findings of our research paper. We believe that this endeavor uh, presents a very valuable opportunity to contribute to the uh, advancement of the workplace practices in uh, this country. Coming to the research methodology, we have used close-ended questionnaire to collect the quantitative data. And we have used convenience sampling approach uh, as it's a simple and easy way to get information compared to the other methodologies. And the sample size was 20 respondents and the population we have uh, taken was the employees working in organizations such as uh, Jotan, Qatar National Bank, Oridu, and Qatar Airways. The findings were uh, the based on our research. We found that most of the respondents were believed that the form provided an environment for free expressions, career growth, and inclusion. To be talking about the conclusion, um, we did a research based on the HRM working conditions in Qatar 
and we came to the conclusion that the that most the companies we surveyed are in Qatar are well organized and effective and our research also shows that the um, the employees who um, employees who do um, employees who the companies that prioritize their employees well being tend to do better eventually and um, and, you, and most of the respondents also said that the um, said that uh, the uh, they are, they feel or they feel valued and uh, they feel valued and respected within their respective organization thank you Okay, yeah. Uh, so uh, I re we really appreciate you know, four of you have come together and have uh, done this uh, primary survey in uh, about various companies which are practices and how uh, it is affecting the environment and how it is influencing the employees there. Okay, and it's very heartening to note that you found a very positive output and uh, you put through this and uh, made this research paper and presenting here. So that's very good. And I also saw that you have uh, collected your respondents included various uh, types and category of employees and also different designations. So that's good. Uh, one feedback I would like to give here is that, uh, you know, when you are doing such type of a primary study, your number of respondents can go up. Okay, because the more the respondents, the better would be your uh, the you know validity and uh, generalizability of your uh, research outcome. That's very good. Now uh, I have one question here. Like so, you you found that you know everything is going great and good, but did you also find there is one area in area where you their companies if they improve. Uh, then uh, it would further help them, uh, you know, for high performance and achieving organizational effectiveness. So, anyone of you can respond. Did you find any one area where for companies can further improve? <laughs> yeah. yeah, anyone of you can respond? Participants, please unmute and answer the question. We haven't gone through them, but we'll look forward for the uh, for any area in India. Uh, we could not hear you. Can you please? Uh, I believe it was mute. Can you please repeat what did you say? Uh, yeah. So we we did not look forward, uh, but we'll make sure that we'll look forward for an area area in India. Okay, uh, that was not my question. I was looking for, uh, like, is there any area of improvement which you observe? Or not area of improvement, like, if they, they are doing good, but if they do it better, then it would give them uh, better employee satisfaction. Uh, we have taken, uh, our research was limited for the employees working in Qatar. So we okay. have uh, gone for India. Okay, okay. no problem. So I wish you all the best. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and it's a good teamwork. Thank you. All the best. Thank you, participants. I would like to thank Dr. Nishant and Dr. Neha John for taking our time for the research papers of Track 3. This marks the end of Track 3 papers.